As we look to the future and a return to normal life, there is also going to be a reckoning about what's been lost. If there is one word that sums up the pandemic, it is loss. Loss of freedom, loss of human contact, loss of jobs, and of course, loss of loved ones. How we cope with loss defines how we got through this last year. I've been thinking a lot about that, and while I was scrolling through Twitter one night, I came across a guy who lives in the Shetland Islands, off northern Scotland. His name is Tom Morton, and he said something that got my attention. Here's part of it. Two things are inevitable, so they say. Death and taxes. And there are four things we're not supposed to talk about in polite company. Sex, religion, politics, and death. Which are also, of course, four of the most interesting things you could possibly talk about. Although death has been for many the final taboo. The final taboo. So I thought, let's tackle it. Especially since he also said, undertakers have the best jokes. And there better be humor, right? This is one way to confront the final taboo. Choose your own gravesite. Tom Morton did it on his 65th birthday. This is the plot which myself and my wife have chosen to be buried in. Unusual, intrepid, and an odd birthday gift to yourself, yet intriguing. There is that sense of taboo that you know, you mustn't talk about death, or if you go to a graveyard, it will be terribly spooky and it will be horrible. And these are not things we want to talk about. But actually, I think it's really healthy to talk about and anticipate these things. So I met Tom virtually, me on a North Vancouver beach, him on the Shetland Islands. Tom Morton, great to meet you. You've written a book about death essentially, can't be the easiest book to promote. It's not, and it's interesting the reactions that people have. On the one hand, you have people who recognize that it is an important subject and that it is dealt with in a, in a way which includes a bit of humor, so I can talk about it in a fairly lighthearted but serious way. Uh, and on the other hand, you've got people who are definitely full of antipathy to the idea. This is a topic, especially in this moment, that we all need to confront. What drove you to write the book? In my own case, and the whole idea for the book came up long before there was any thought of corona or COVID-19, was because I had two heart attacks. And suddenly, having gone from that feeling of being invulnerable and immortal, I really had to confront the fact that this had an ending. I was 59. From that point on, death would be my constant companion. Lucky for him, his wife and his daughter are both doctors, and they saved his life after both heart attacks. Now he jokingly calls himself a dead man talking. Tom, you're a broadcaster, you're an author, a musician, and since 2015, you've been a funeral celebrant. What is a funeral celebrant? A celebrant, I suppose what we're talking about here, is somebody who provides uh, the end of life rituals for people who are not religious. One of the interesting things about being a journalist and a broadcaster and somebody who, in uh, crude Scottish terms, we would call a gob and a stick, is that your skills aren't that applicable to other things. I mean, what do you do when you've had a couple of heart attacks? But one of the things I was always good at was telling stories. And I was also good at speaking to people and getting those stories from them. And really one of the crucial aspects of being a funeral celebrant, if we want to use that word, is telling somebody's story, making that story count, making that person's life important and memorable. And that was what drew me into the world of funerals. The things that you deal with when you're helping people through the process of saying goodbye are 
or sad. Uh, where do you find humour through this? Well, Donna, I have to tell you that undertakers, in my experience, are some of the funniest people that you could ever hope to come across. We actually spent the afternoon earlier here uh, telling each other undertaker jokes. But one of the best ones I've heard was uh, about a woman who has lost her husband and comes in to the undertakers to discuss the arrangements. Eventually he says to her, what about a notice for the paper? What about an obituary? And she says, well, how much would that cost? It's uh, actually a dollar or whatever it is per word of the obituary. And she thinks for a bit and then she goes, okay, I've got it, Mike dead. And the undertaker looks at her and says, do you know, I think that's a bit harsh. I'll pay half if we make it a bit longer. And she looks at him and thinks for a bit and then eventually says, okay, I agree. We'll put in a notice and it'll say, Mike dead, boat for sale. It is laugh or cry, especially now in the face of the pandemic. We have witnessed death on a staggering scale. Who will speak for all the dead, the millions buried without a service, without a ritual, without a goodbye? The beginning of the pandemic where there were so many restrictions on funerals and people were having to have either very small or no funeral at all, People were saying, well, it's okay, we'll have something later when all this is done. And now people are saying, actually, we'll not. We'll not bother, we'll just get on with things. I think we're storing up a degree of loss which we're going to have to, at some point, confront. And I think it could be very damaging for our mental health. I was with my father when he was dying and I realized in that time that I needed someone and needed someone to help the family through the days ahead. And I think that's what you do. Well, my own father is nearing the end of his life. And uh, I think the discussions that we've had have been, for me, very reassuring. Because he is a very religious man. He is, still is somebody who is a very strong believer. And yet, uh, he did turn to me recently and say, well, you might have to do this yet. Which I thought was possibly the biggest accolade I've had from him. However and whenever the road runs out, we might need a little help with the final ritual, the saying goodbye, perhaps from someone just like Tom. It's not too late to remember. There is time to recognize, recall, to grieve properly. We can walk to the end of the world with our dead still, and we should, we must, stand with them one last time for their sakes, but especially for our own.